You may be seated. Thank you. Isn't it awesome just to worship the Lord a little bit? Just to come in His presence and, and just listen to some music to open up our hearts and just to experience the presence of God. Uh, if you did not know, this week we are the Church of the Week for House FM. Let's give House FM a round of applause. They'll be, uh, they're in the back today, and they're going to be giving out some information to you, and uh, just challenge us. The music that you like today is exactly what they play on House FM, and if you'd like that, uh, feel free to, to download their app on their phone and just listen to the House FM for some time of worship and experience with God. Um, wonderful, wonderful radio station. Defining moments. This is our last week on defining moments, and we've discussed the rich young ruler and Nicodemus and the blind man. We've also discussed the paralyzed man in Mark chapter 2. Last week we talked about the woman at the well. But there's not a better character in the Bible than Jesus himself. And Jesus himself had some very defining moments in his life. And we're going to talk about how to take what is a defining moment. How to understand when we are experiencing a defining moment. How does God work within our life? Sometimes we pass by defining moments because we are not aware that God is trying to do something within our life. And defining moments is when God has, has brought you to a place where you need him and you want him and, and you are experiencing something within your life that if we stick our head in the sand, those defining moments may pass us by. We may look at those and we may see something that's different, but we cannot experience what God wants us to do. So this is the prayer that I have for you at the start. Open my eyes so I can see the truth. Open my ears so I can hear your voice. Open my mind so I can understand your words. And open my heart so I may receive what you want me to receive today. Open my eyes, open my ears, and open my heart. Because today I want to give to you the application to a defining moment. What can that defining moment look like in your life? It could be as simple as when you are deciding to go to college. Or it could be who you're going to marry. It could be a decision that you make in business. A defining moment is when God is trying to get your attention. And he wants to give to you something that maybe if you do not look at him and embrace him, that it'll pass you by without even knowing it was there. Many Bible characters that we have shared had defining moments. Moses had a number of defining moments, but one of his greatest defining moments was when he was in the, in the desert and, and he had the burning bush experience. He heard God speak. And in the presence of God, Take off your sandals because you are speaking to God and you are standing on holy ground. It changed his life. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, defining moments when they were cast into captivity and they decided not to defile themselves. They are going to stand for God. Daniel had a defining moment when he was thrown into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. King David had many defining moments. One of his worst defining moments was what he decided to do against everyone. He decided to sleep with Bathsheba. He sinned. And God brought Nathan in front of him. And Nathan stuck his finger in his face and said, You are the man. You have sinned against God. And David fell on his face before God and he confessed his sin. And in Psalms chapter 51, he broke and he said, He said, Create in me a clean heart. So sometimes our defining moments are positive, and sometimes our defining moments are negative. And what we do with those negative defining moments, what do we do? Do we stand up for God, or do we walk away from God? Sometimes we get so hurt. Sometimes we have no idea what to do, so we just stick our head in the sand, and we walk away from God, and God wants us in those defining moments to come to ourselves and say, I have sinned against you, and against you only have I sinned. We have those defining moments in all of our lives, not just in biblical characters, but in your life, in your defining moments. What do we do? Do we thank God for the positive, or do we rely on God when we are broken? Brokenness. I truly believe that until God takes us and moves us and breaks us, 
till he breaks our hearts before him. God cannot usually use something that is arrogant and cocky. God wants to use something that has been broken. And in our lives, in all of our lives, we've had things that have broken us, that have devastated us. Things that when we look back and say, oh, I never, never want to go through that again. I have learned my lesson from what I have experienced. And God has taken us in our life, in our everyday life, and have changed us and molded us into somebody that's different than we were. Somebody that has changed us. And that's when God wants to do great things within your life. When he takes us, and instead of being cocky and arrogant about what God has done for us, we are humbled because of what God does to us. And when we are not the same person, we look back at our life 5, 10, 15 years ago, we could say, I am better now because of what I went through. I am stronger now because I am less reliant on myself and more reliant on God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 15, it talks about the armor of God. But I want to take the first part of that. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when, you, when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. When the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. So often, we live life like everything's going to be wonderful and great. But the, the day of evil, the day that Satan's going to try to attack you, the day of your defining moment, we have to be able to stand our ground. Because if we do not stand our ground, we will fall to those temptations. We will fall to every while of the devil if we are not standing our ground. It says stand. Have the power. Have the ability to stand within our life while we are living in defining moments. Every day of our lives we wake up and we know that today could be a day that changes our life. Today could be a day that the phone call rings the phone rings. This could be the day that some calamity takes place. This could be a day that the greatest joy of our life could take place. A defining moment can happen at any time. So what do those defining moments look like? Defining moments usually come in one of three areas. A defining moment comes sometimes from our pain. When we are hurting. When we're struggling. When we say, I can't do this any longer. I am broken. I'm hurt. I'm struggling. I cannot allow this in my life any longer. And because of the pain and the agony within my heart, we stand our ground. Because of my pain, because of my brokenness, it could be our physical pain, emotional pain. Regardless, it's pain that causes you much anguish. It is as intense as it can possibly get. And when we go through pain, that can be a defining moment. We stand and we say, no more. No more will I go through this. No longer will I allow this to take place within my life. Jesus has some of those defining moments. He had been betrayed, beaten, and put on a cross. Jesus had a defining moment. When you are betrayed by someone that you love, and that, that defining moment says, you know what? You have to do what you have to do. I is not going to deter me from going to the cross. What Justin just played on the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all of our sins. That is exactly what Jesus wants to do for you. In that defining moment in our pain, we can have the greatest blessing within our life. And then a defining moment came from piercing truth. When you know what truth is, and you embrace the truth, Instead of running from the truth. When you know that you need Jesus for your salvation. You know, you know that Jesus is the Lord and you have to accept that. It's a penetrating truth that I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And you said, I don't want that. I don't believe that. And you stand outside of the truth that someday someone communicates the truth. Whether it's through song or whether it's through sermon. Somebody teaches you and talks to you about the truth. And the piercing truth of Jesus. And you accept that piercing truth. The piercing truth is revealed. I believe Paul had that piercing truth on the road to Damascus. When his eyes were blinded for three days. And he spoke to the Lord. 
And he understood exactly who he was. He was causing trouble for Jesus. And Jesus blinded him. And he experienced the presence of Jesus. And his eyes were open. He became one of the greatest communicators of all times. Wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Because he had a piercing truth that he was against God. And God wanted him for him. And when God puts us on his side, it changes everything. A defining moment comes when we have an irresistible love for God. An irresistible love. That means when you wake up in the morning, you turn on House FM. That means you want to worship the Lord. You want to come to church. You have an irresistible passion and a love for God. God is not something that you do on a pastime. God is not somebody you go to on Sunday morning. God is somebody you love. You worship. You have an irresistible love for God. You know you can't go through life without him. You have been broken God has changed you, and God has came into your life and has healed you. And you can have a testimony that I gave my life to Christ, and Christ did something radical within my life. I can't just say, I don't want God, or I'll go to God on Sunday morning. It's an everyday irresistible passion and love for God. That's a defining moment. Because God can work. He can change. He can work within your life when you have a brokenness for him, a passion for truth, and say, Lord, I love you. I want to speak about you. I want to hear about you. I want to praise your name. I want you. I know that I can't be satisfied in any area of my life unless you are the priority. We talked last week about the woman at the well. Talked about her, her needs, her basic needs. And she went everywhere to find her basic needs met until Jesus met her at the well. And her basic needs were confronted by Jesus and she changed everything about her life. When we are trying to meet our needs, trying to be satisfied outside of God, we will never be satisfied. We need God and we need to have that irresistible love for God. And he changes everything when we have a passion for him. So, how do we know when our defining moments are coming along? How do we know that? I think there's some things that we have to be prepared for. We know that we're our defining moment in life uh, when we know that we have a love and, and a desire to know to do what we are compelled to do. When we feel that we must leave the safety of what we know and do what we are compelled to do. Compelled. Drawn to. Taken back. I know this is my safety. I know this is what I know. But I am beginning to be compelled to do something different. Compelled. Drawn to. For no reason other than God's in our life. I'm being compelled to do something for him. I know what my safety is. I know what I'm good at. I know that this is what I like. But maybe it's something that, it's a ministry. Maybe it's service. Maybe it's your calling. But you're beginning to be compelled. Compelled to do something that's wonderful. Jesus had a defining moment. He said, it is my time to begin. It is my time. He was about 30 years old and he was getting ready to start his earthly ministry. And he went and he was baptized by John. He was compelled to follow after God. He had spent 30 years of his life and the next three and a half years was going to be the salvation. And he went to John the Baptist. And he said, will you please baptize me? And in that presence of Jesus being baptized by John, the power of the Holy Spirit was seen. Jesus, the Son, was being baptized. God, the Father, opened up heavens and said, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. Wouldn't that be awesome when God says that about you? This is my son, or this is my daughter. I am well pleased with them because why? Because they're doing what I ask. They're just following after me. They love me. They're being compelled. And the Spirit of God descended upon Jesus as a dove. The power of the Trinity being seen, Jesus the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit all in one place at the baptism of, John, of Jesus by John the Baptist. What a wonderful sight. 
And then we know that we are defining moments when, when it is faith that dictates our decisions rather than logic. It's faith that dictates our decision rather than logic. You know, when Jesus asks us to do something, sometimes it doesn't make sense. We say, why am I going to do that? Or why would I sacrifice this to have that? When faith determines our decisions instead of logic, when we say, say I don't know how to do that, or I don't want to do that, and Jesus compels us to speak, to do something, it doesn't make sense. But it's still the greatest decisions that you can make. When you have to make a decision. When you have to make a radical decision. And we don't pray about it. We don't even think about it. And we don't talk to God about it. It will not be a defining moment on the positive side. But when God has tried, called you and he's compelled you to make a decision, it may not make sense. It may seem awkward to you. But it can be a defining moment when you make the decision based on faith instead of logic. When you can rationalize everything that you do and everything that you say, it is you making those decisions. But when God is in the mix of the decisions that you make and the things that you do, it can become a defining moment because faith is more important than logic. Because whatever God does, sometimes God does the miraculous when we get out of the way. So I don't understand it. We trust in God through it. Because when we trust in God, God can do great things. We know that we have defining moment in our life when our choices are about being pleasing God and not pleasing ourselves. Pleasing God is so important. What does God want for me? See, when you, when you give your life to Christ, and many of us are early Christians, and we just gave our life to Christ, and, and we're saying, what, what do I do now? How, how, how do I make this thing take place now? I, I don't understand everything. When we try to make our decision pleasing God, it stands and what does God say? What does God's word say? Because here's the issue. If we tried to please God in our own abilities without knowing what God says, what happens is we are in our self. We are in our flesh. But when we say, God, teach me what you want, and through the word of God we learn truths, our eye-opening truths of God's word, it changes how we make decisions. It changes why we make decisions. It changes who we try to serve. It changes why we try to serve him. Because our eyes are open to the truth. We make decisions because that's what God wants us to do. We change what we do because that's what God wants us to do. We become humble and not arrogant because God has changed us. Sometimes we have to have a passion and a love for God. And I love what God does for us. When God changes us, he changes us from the inside out and not from the outside in. When I, when I quit drinking, I'll come to church. When I quit sinning, I'll come to church. When I do better, I'll come to church. When I try all these things, I will try God. And every time that we try to change from the outside in, we fail. Every time. Every time. Oh, you could do good for a while. You could play the game for a month or two. But any time that we try to change from the outside in instead of the inside out, we're miserable and we're failures. But when we humble ourselves and say, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I am broken and I am miserable and I need you. He says this. He says, come to me. Come to me. Abide in me. And I will change you from the inside. It's not about the outward appearance. It's about what takes place deep in the heart. And we change from the heart. We will change on the outside. It's not about what people think. It's about you and God. And when you and God have that relationship, that we have that defining moment, that God wants to change me because he loves me, and I just become submissive to him, he does the great work within my life. We know that we have a defining moment in our life when it seems that life just gets harder because we're trying to do the right thing. You know, don't you hate when somebody's on a diet because they talk about their diet? Well, I'm on a diet, and you're going to hate me talking about this. Diets stink, don't they? But you have to go on a diet to do the right thing. 
And it's expensive to eat right. Somebody give me an amen. amen. It's expensive. They ought to change all the diet foods and make it cheap. But diet foods are expensive. But you know what? I say all the time, I hate being on a diet because it's hard. The self, I want to eat this big old juicy steak and eat a drink of Dr. Pepper and, and just eat a baked potato with cheese and everything on it. But you know what? I'm sitting there and I like, okay, I'll have this six ounce piece of chicken and broccoli and be happy about it. It's hard to go on a diet. But you know what? It's the right thing. Sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. Because if you don't do the right thing, the complications of the bad thing can overwhelm you. So sometimes you have to say, I'm going to do the right thing. And sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. But when I am compelled to go through the pain in my personal life to obtain the right thing, that could be a defining moment. And when we know it is right, we know what we should do. We know what we should give up. We know what we can do. And it's hard. That can be a defining moment. Because life stinks sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. But we know that God wants to take care of us through it. And then we know we're at a defining moment when we can see God's hand and protection all over us. See, that's when the diet becomes something that is compelling when you start seeing God in it or when we start seeing success through it. And Jesus was starting his earthly ministry. He was just baptized and he went into the wilderness and he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. And in that temptation, the Bible says that the angels came and ministered to him and protected him. A fasting is the, the, not eating or giving food up for a spiritual reason, for prayer. And Jesus fasted for 40 days and he was tempted for 40 days. He was tempted to sin. He was tempted to give up. Satan was in his face and God's protection was on him. And whenever we are going through our temptations, whenever we are going through life, what we need is we need God's protection. We need God's help. We need to say, Lord, I cannot do this alone. When we make decisions, we have to make decisions on God's hands. When we make, when we are broken, when we're struggling, it can't be about what we want. It has to be what God wants. See, I, I believe maturity, Christian maturity is saying, Lord, I want to be different. I need to be different. I can't do this any longer. Asking God to give you a defining moment. Asking God to change you. Asking God to say, I need to know you in a, in a way that I've never experienced before. I need to be broken so you can come in and change my life because I don't care what people think. I care what you think. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's very difficult. But a defining moment is where we can see God's hand all over our life. All over our life. His protection is something that we cannot take lightly. Because in the fruit, in, in, when God is speaking to us, he's saying, in all your temptations... Put on the armor of God and stand. Because somebody that doesn't like me doesn't like you. And they didn't like me, they're not going to like you. And if you stand up for me, they're going to stand against you. So put on the armor of God. And after you put on the armor of God, stand and be ready to fight. Be ready to see what is taking place. Be ready to stop Satan. Stop the temptations. Be aware. Be self-aware of what can take place. Stand. And when you stand, understand the power of God can be upon you. But when we fall to every temptation, 
and we fail to stand up for God, the protection of God is not upon us. You, you can even take that in our giving. In Malachi where it says, it says, trust in me and see if I will take care of the devourer. I'll put away Satan. I will bless your finances. Put on God and stand in every area. In your marriage, in your children, in your finances. Stand. Stand for God. And the protection of God will be upon you. Imagine what that means. That means when you're struggling, when you're fighting, when you have no hope, when you want to give up, you can just say, Lord, now, now, I need you now. And God's hand, his protection will just engulf you. Nothing will be able to touch you when you understand this defining moment. I am his the higher the level that you go spiritually, the bigger the devil. Say that with me. The higher the level, the bigger the devil. And when you stay down here on the bottom and you don't want to do anything, Satan's not going to bother you. You can play the game all day long. Satan's going to say, God, I got you exactly where you want. But you start standing up. You start looking at the word. You start praising his name. You start doing things for God. You start standing up and going on a different level. Satan takes attention. And he is going to try to fight you. And that's when you know, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I need you because I can't do this alone. The higher the level, the bigger the devil. If you don't want to fight, stay on the ground. But when you want to fight... Put on the whole armor of God and stand. And with everything that you do, stand. And let God fight for you. The works of Satan will be all around you. But the power of God will encompass you. And if we have the power of God upon our life, you make the decisions. You make that defining moment. What does God want for me? What does God want me to do? What can I do? Lord, I want you to be genuine within my life. The decisions I make, just like in Psalm chapter 51, create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. In other words, forgive me of everything that I have done in the past. I need you. And if we are forgiven of our past, we can stand up in the present and we can stand up and stand in every fight that we're in and say, I want to bless you. I want to honor you. And I want to be your child I want to accept you. I want that defining moment to change my life. <coughs> a defining moment. Many of us have had them. Many of us will have them again. It's not a one-time deal. Defining moments can come in multiple areas of our life multiple times. But the first defining moment that I believe that every person must have before they can trust in God for their protection and their future is to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That is the greatest, most important decision you will ever make is your faith in Jesus. You cannot be blessed and protected in every area from God until you accept Jesus as God. Until you accept Jesus and what he's done for you. He died on the cross. He died for you. Not just for your salvation. He died on the cross for your protection for your future, for forgiveness. It is the greatest defining moment in life is you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And let me tell you, when you accept him, you don't give anything up. You didn't give anything up for Christ. You know what Christ has done? He has blessed you, he has gifted you, and he has enabled you to do something great. Oh, you may have given up some friends. You may have to give up a lifestyle you may have to give up some things that you have done, but what you gain in the access of Jesus is nothing compared to what Jesus wants to give to you. He wants to give to you a life, a life that's abundant, a life that changes everything, and he wants to give to you protection in every area. If you're struggling in your marriage, if you're struggling in your finances, if you're struggling as being a parent, if you're struggling at your job, if you're struggling about your self-identity, here's what that defining moment looks like. 
You come to God. You come to him. And be honest with him. An open, honest evaluation and prayer. Say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I can't do this on my own. And when we humbly come before God, and we humbly ask him to help us, he just wraps his arms around us. And he says, let's go. Let me walk with you through your defining moments. Let me help you through this. And when we have God on our side, it can't be any sweeter than that. When we worship his name, when we go through our problems, he is with us. How many of you guys want Jesus with you every day? It's a defining moment. It's what he wants. And he says, just ask. It's going to be tough. There's going to be troubles. But a defining moment is just needing Christ. Open up your eyes of truth. Soaking it in. Staying within his life and what he wants for you. That is the defining moment. My question. What is it that you're facing? What is it that is a defining moment in your life that you're saying, this is mine. I'm not giving this one up. I, I've tried that before and I have failed. It's that I'm not giving it up. And Jesus says, when you do this, when you open your heart, when you open your life, when you say, I don't want this, but Lord, I want you. Whatever it is that you hold on to, whatever it is that you will not give up, is exactly what Satan is using to keep you from God. And when you hold on to it so tight, whatever it is, you will never be blessed by God because Satan is using this to keep you from having that relationship with Christ. But when you, Lord... And you know why people raise their hands to worship? Just say, Lord, I'm yours. There's nothing in front of me. I am totally, totally sold out to you in worship. Nothing hidden. I'm yours. And when we can stand up and worship like this, or we can pray like this, God is saying, now, now I have you. Now I can use you. Now I can move you. Those defining moments are important. What do you do with your defining moment? We're going to have prayer in a few minutes. I'm going to ask our deacons to do something. And we talked about this this week. We're going to have our deacons be in prayer mode for you. We're going to have deacons coming down and praying. Deacons and their wives down here in, in prepare, preparation for this sermon. Because we all need those defining moments. We all want those defining moments. And we need to be prepared for those defining moments. So I've asked our deacons and their wives to be prepared to come down here to pray with you. To pray over you. Just to, just to let you know. Just to let you know you're not doing this thing by yourself. Wherever you struggle. Whatever it is that you're holding on to. Open them up. And I pray that if you open up and you give it to God, there can be a defining moment that changes everything about you. It is what God wants for your life. Let's go to prayer. Dear Father, we come before you and we ask you, Lord, to break our hearts, to soften our lives, to allow us to give over to you the most important part of our life, and that's our soul that's our life, our decisions. Lord, make us who you want us to be and protect us. Our insecurities, our failures, our faults. Lord, forgive us. Empower us to move forward in these defining moments of life. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Would you please stand to your feet? An opportunity to give God a chance to work within your life. 
I firmly believe that when we take that first step, God changes the rest of the steps. When we say, I need God, I'm willing to pray to God, I'm willing to be open to God, God does the rest. So if you would like to, if you need that defining moment, you want that defining moment, all it is is a time of prayer. And let the deacons and their wives come alongside you and just have a word of prayer with you, empower you to give you strength to do something new, something great. A defining moment of your life could be today. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord, be with us. Allow us to be strong. Allow us to be heard. Allow us to be forgiven in every area of our life. We thank you for that. Penetrate our hearts. Allow us to see and to feel your presence. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The defining moment is in your life. Why don't we give it to God and let him change everything about us?